All right, hey guys, Mitch here with the Audio Dabbler YouTube channel, and I got a little bit of a different setup going on here, and the reason is because I had a viewer ask a question about the Behringer UMC 404 HD and whether or not you could use it to send audio to a DSLR camera and avoid having to sync audio and post. So... Let's just get started on this current setup and how it all works and some pros and cons. And so let's get started. All right, so first of all, let's ask the question, why would you want to put your audio straight into the camera instead of using something else to record? It's, it's hard to, it's, it's kind of a, it's, it's a hard thing. Because it literally, unless you're using iMovie, if you've got any kind of professional software, Premiere or Final Cut Pro, um, I'm not for sure if LumaFusion can sync audio, and I'm sure there's other ones out there, they can sync it in post really, really easily. I mean, in Final Cut Pro, you just highlight to highlight the, the camera video and the audio source and sync, and it will sync it up. But if you do want to go this route, and to route the audio, a few things to note is in-body cameras compress the crap out of audio. Right now I'm using it, and I've already tested it earlier, and I think it sounds pretty good for, for what it is. I mean, so just, be, just note that you're not going to get as high of a quality audio because of your camera's compression of the audio. Because it compresses it down all into the video file, and it usually compresses the crap out of it and and things, and so that's why it can be a little iffy. And you just kind of play around with it and see if you are happy with the audio quality, and maybe take some time and maybe sync it and see how much time it actually saves by setting two different things, two different systems up, and see what works best for you. Um, another thing is to make sure you adjust the microphone volume on your camera way down. Like I have my G7 and it's at like negative 12 dB for the input. And that's just going to make it less noisy from the camera, the preamp little thing in the camera. And I'll be able to boost the signal here to get cleaner audio. And then I can always, you know, put a compressing compression on and post to kind of bring up the levels um, and hopefully without too much noise, we will see at the end of this video. So the short answer is yes, it can be done, but you know, there's just a little extra setup involved, but with any kind of setups, once you do them over and over again, a few times, then they become second nature. You build muscle memory and that just, I think it works. And so let's dive into actually how everything is set up. All right, so let's get this set up. So right now, the audio that you're hearing is a Rode Video Micro. It's a little tiny, I'll show a picture of it on the screen. Um, it's a little tiny microphone that, um, it works pretty well, but, you know, it's not powered. It's not a condenser mic, so you're going to probably get some noise. And it's not going to sound as clean as once I get everything set up this way, or if you had a, you know, a powered microphone plugged into the camera itself so so here's the Behringer and simplest setup possible is I have a battery bank I have a USB cable and so I'm just going to simply plug the USB cable into the interface and then I am going to plug the USB cable the other end into the battery bank which is in this nice little case thing and as you can see possibly is I have a I have power lights right here so it's working and it's on and so then the other thing you'll need you need a cable similar to this it has quarter inch jacks on one side and it has a 3.5 millimeter on the other side. I'll leave a link in the description for all this stuff. And so then I would go the main out here. 
and then I would plug that into the camera, which I'm not yet because I don't have a microphone plugged up yet. So now an XLR cable, simple XLR cable. And, you know, I'm gonna use, I'm using channel three, but you can use any channel that you want. It's always a good idea to have phantom power off. And then when you plug your microphones in, then put phantom power on. You know, that way you don't accidentally plug in a wrong microphone and it shorted out. But that microphone is going, that cable is going to this. It's just a MXL 990. It's a cheap, large frame condenser microphone. And then I have the levels. I have phantom power on. I have the levels set to about halfway and then I'm gonna turn the main out up once I plug it into the camera, I'll turn the main out amp, the main out up to a little over 50%, but it'll vary depending on the camera and the noise and how close you are to the microphone itself. The pad will definitely put a kind of a limiter or kind of a cut, kind of a, a cut on it so that it's not as loud. And that would be if you have a really, really hot line input, you can hit that pad and it'll kind of reduce the volume down. And uh, this right here is the important thing I was talking about. This is a stereo, mo stereo mono mix. You wanna have that pressed in for this particular audio interface because then that's going to come out left and right channels as opposed to just one or the other depending on this is a stereo set, this is a stereo set. So one and two is a stereo set, three and four is a stereo set. And if you have it plugged in, if you have the stereo up, then it's gonna be left and right. And so the last thing you really need to worry about is this playback in button right here. And what that does is it monitors the inputs or the playback. Since you are monitoring the inputs here, you want it all the way over to the ends and this will affect the headphone and the main outputs. Now, one thing you can do is you can plug in headphones here so that you can kind of monitor audio. But what it's not going to do is it's not going to give you true representation of the audio that's going to your camera. And so what you definitely need to do is to do some test runs and figure out where the main mix needs to be and where the microphone volume needs to be. And so it'll be some trial and error depending on your particular camera and your, your particular setup. But once you get everything and you kind of know and you can, if you have a, a level meter on your camera, you can kind of see, okay, well I can see where everything is going. Then you will, it'll be a lot better and then it'll be quicker and easier to set up. And so now let's, um, now let's plug in the MXL 990 and the Behringer and let's see the difference. All right, so you can see right here that I have the cable coming, running from there, down and around, and I have it plugged in like so. So I'm gonna note that you definitely need to watch out and probably secure this cable either by, you know, kind of wrapping it around so that's not pulling so hard on this little three and a half, uh, 3.5 millimeter jack. Because, I mean, that's the bad thing about 3.5 millimeters is they are a little flimsy. And so if that got pulled, if this cable got pulled down really hard or something, then you could definitely damage that component. And so I would, uh, even though that it works, I would definitely be cautious when utilizing this. <sighs> All right, so now this right here is the audio quality from the MXL 990 plugged into the Behringer with the audio coming out of the main mix into strictly into the camera the camera's compression and all that so there's probably a, there's probably a little bit of a difference between the audio that I'm getting right now versus the audio as I was setting up because I was just using that video micro plugged directly in but I will leave both of these unprocessed. You know, I may boost the levels a little bit, but I will leave these virtually unprocessed so that you can get a good idea of the quality difference in the video. You know, this is just a simple setup. I've got it just running out. And so the camera is actually, it's a lot further away now than it was before. The microphone, I got about, you know, about eight inches 
between. Before, when I was using the Video Micro, it was up here so I could get a top-down view. And so I was a good maybe two, two and a half foot away from the camera my mouth was. But I was trying to talk up to it, you know, make my voice go up that way so it would um, be a little bit... Hopefully a little bit cleaner, a little clearer, not like I was yelling or anything. And I mean, right now I'm just talking in a in a normal voice. I can see the levels on my microphone on the, I can see the screen on my G7, and you know the levels are they're moving up and up and up and down, showing that I got good signal. It's not going over to the red and clipping. Um, as long as I get a good meaty meaty sound. You know, then I can always just put a little bit of compression on it and bring boost all the levels up, and uh, it should be should be good on that. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully, you found this informative and uh, you at least learned something out of it. Um, leave a thumbs up, and that really helps around here. Also, if you um, want to comment below, let me know how you actually sync up your audio and video, or if you do sync your audio and video, or do you record it straight into the camera like I did in this video um, leave it leave me a comment below and let me know how you do that and you know so we can kind of um, you know get some different ideas of how other people you know do their audio and video edits and stuff like that and um, I guess have uh, have a good rest of your day I'm gonna play with some ponies is my favorite and i will leave some links here here i don't know how you'll yeah maybe probably cover my face up but you can see them here and here some other videos